Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigations will now come to order. The chair now recognizes himself for five minutes for an opening statement. All right, back to where I was. Welcome to today's hearing on the Energy and Commerce uh, Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigations. Today, for the first time, this committee welcomes the head of the Department of, the, of Energy's new Office of Manufacturing and Energy Supply Chains, or MESC. In February of 2022, as part of the department's newest reorganization plan, three new program offices, including MESC, were created. MESC was set up with the goal of strengthening energy supply chains and increasing the domestic manufacturing base. This is intended to support what the DOE characterizes as a clean and equitable energy transition. MESC is currently administering about a dozen programs funded through the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act and the so-called Inflation Reduction Act. Almost all of MESC's programs have been created recently. In short, a brand new office will give out billions in funding for numerous new programs over the course of just a couple of years. Now, I don't care what party you're in, this scenario, no matter what the department or the administration, deserves increased oversight. Not long after its creation, MESC came to the attention of then Republican leader Rogers and myself after it announced $2.8 billion in financial awards to 20 companies under its Battery Manufacturing and Recycling Grants Program in October of last year. As a part of these announcements, Microvast Incorporated was selected to receive a $200 million grant for a battery manufacturing plant in Tennessee. Shortly after the announcement, Microvast's association with the Chinese Communist Party became apparent. Microvast produced its battery components in China. The bulk of its revenue was generated in China, and according to Microvast's own SEC filings, the government, referring to the People's Republic of China, quote, exert substantial influence over the manner in which we must conduct our business activities and may intervene at any time with no notice, end quote. After learning of Microvest's concern, concerning ties to China, then Republican Leader Rogers and I sent a letter to Secretary of Energy Jennifer Granholm on December 14 of last year requesting a briefing to include specific information about the Microvest award. The department has yet to answer our specific questions, provide any documents or sufficient information about the vetting processes behind the Battery Manufacturing and Recycling Grant Awards. In response, we asked, with two weeks' notice, that the appropriate official from the DOE testify before this subcommittee on May 23rd. Unfortunately, the department refused to attend, citing inadequate time to prepare. However, strangely enough, the night before the hearing, the department announced it was canceling its tentative award to Microvast. It is unclear whether these events are related. To date, the department has still not shared with Congress the reason for this decision or any details of additional due diligence the department may or may not have, have conducted. We had an informative discussion with witnesses who did join us on May 23rd to talk about general challenges facing our energy sector supply chains. The witnesses talked at length about threats posed by foreign rivals to our secure energy security, including government programs. The main point is we don't want Chinese companies getting American taxpayer money to create more Chinese jobs and Chinese technology, even if some of those jobs might end up being in the United States. My colleagues and I have lots of questions on have, have lots of questions only the Department of Energy can answer. MESC's goal is to boost domestic, domestic industry and secure energy supplies. However, the microvast misstep has increased our doubt as to whether this mission is being successfully completed out. While I commend the office for canceling the microvast award, it shouldn't take a news story and multiple congressional letters for MESC not to award grants to problematic companies. The main cloud of haze here concerns due diligence and vetting processes at the DOE. We are aware of at least one other selectee besides Microvest that is also no longer moving forward with the awards process. The detailed reason for Amprius grant cancellation is unknown. While we were disappointed in the department's refusal to originally participate in our hearing last month, I am glad to finally have them here today. As such, we welcome Dr. David Howell, Principal Director, Deputy Director of MESC. Mr. Howell has previously served as MESC's Acting Director as well as Director of the Vehicle Technologies Office for the DOE. Today we hope to learn more about this new office. The, this committee also hopes to gain some insight on how it is prioritizing its awards and how seriously it takes its domestic manufacturing charter. 
I thank Principal De Deputy Director Howell for joining us today, and I look forward to our discussion. And with that, I yield back.